Okay, so this problem is, uh, or this video is on the unit 5e handout. All right, uh, so more parallelogram related stuff for the most part, or quadrilaterals, special quadrilaterals. Uh, okay, so let's see. Um, parallelogram has two 25 inch sides and two 14 inch sides. How long could the diagonals be? Okay, so um, here, let's try drawing something here. Uh, if I draw it like this, let's say that I've got my 25 here and my 14 like that. So 25, 14, and the 14 here, and the 25 there. Right. Now, most people can kind of tell, well, these two points are going to be further apart than these two points. So here's my long diagonal, and here's my shorter diagonal going from the top part to the bottom part. If you think about it, if I kind of pull out these corners, imagine that they're sort of attached, the 25 and the 14 are attached there and there. If I pull out these two corners, that parallelogram gets flatter and flatter and flatter. So eventually, you end up with a parallelogram that looks more like this, almost flat. 25, 14, 14 here, and 25 here. Oops. Just like that. Okay. So, you can kind of tell that this diagonal it's longer and longer until this thing is totally flat. Right? Well, the length of that thing, the longest it could ever get is 25 plus 14 if that thing were totally flat. But it can't be totally flat, so it's got to be a little less than 25 plus 14. So the, the long diagonal approaches, approaches the length 25 plus 14 which is 39. So it's got to be a little bit less than 39. So the diagonals would have to be less than 39 inches, not equal to it or else that thing would be flat. Okay, so let me get rid of some of this stuff in the middle. And I'll put that other line back. Okay, now the shorter diagonal also occurs in this flat one. It's this length right here. Right? And the flatter this triangle gets, the closer this point gets to that point. Um, so if it got really, really flat, then what happens is, let me get rid of this, this part altogether. The flatter this gets, the 14 gets closer and closer to the 25, and that green thing starts to look like this. Here's the 25, here's the 14. 25, 14. And then the green goes from here to here. And then you'd have something similar on the other side where this is 14 and this is 25. Well, really, I just want that green length there. If you think about it, it's the leftover if I did 25 minus 14. Right? So this diagonal, the short diagonal, approaches the length of 25 minus 14, which is 11. So the diagonal has to be a little bit longer than 11 inches and a little bit shorter than 39 inches. That's the range of values that it could be, anywhere between 11 and 39. OK. Let's try number two. So the median of a trapezoid. Uh, they mention it's like the mid-segment of a triangle. OK, so let's see. So a trapezoid has two sides that are parallel and two sides that are not parallel. And uh, the two non-parallel sides might be equal, might not be. So, but definitely two parallel sides, okay? Uh, so in this problem they say, let's, the, let's make the parallel sides 12 and 18 centimeters. Um, and then it says connect the midpoints. 
And in a trapezoid, that's called the median of the trapezoid. Now notice the median of a trapezoid is like the mid-segment of a triangle. It goes midpoint to midpoint. Uh, the median of a triangle goes corner to midpoint. So this one is a little, I don't like the wording of it because it, it's not really related to the median of a, of a triangle other than the words are the same. Okay, so the trick to this problem is actually to slice uh, the trapezoid with one diagonal. So I'm going to cut it right here, let's say. You could cut it the other way too, but I'm going to cut it that way. So I'm now going to look at this triangle right here. So it looks like this. Whoops, let me draw that a little bit better. So this is 12 centimeters. This is a midpoint. You can probably take a pretty good guess that this blue dot that I just highlighted is the midpoint of that segment. Okay. So it turns out that this thing right here is a mid-segment of the triangle. So we know that mid-segments are half of the third side. So this equals uh, 6 centimeters. Okay, and if I look at this triangle right here, oh, geez. This piece is also a mid segment. So it's going to be half of its third side, which is 18. So this is going to be 9. So over here we get 9, over here we get 6. So it turns out that the median equals 6 plus 9 which is 15 centimeters. Now, you might notice that in the trapezoid, this thing is halfway down the trapezoid between the top and the bottom. Well, 12 is the top, 18 is the bottom. If I ask for the number halfway between 12 and 18, we would just average them. 12 plus 18 divided by 2 is 15. So that's another way I get it. Okay, let's do one more trapezoid problem in number three. Okay, if the non-parallel sides have the same length, then the trapezoid is called an isosceles trapezoid. So if this equals this, and you know it's a trapezoid, so the top and bottom are parallel, then you know that it's isosceles. Um, oh my God. How did I write this? If the trapezoid happens to be in a good mood, then you can call it a happy trappy. Okay, I, I'm guessing it was late whenever I wrote that one. Uh, suppose you have an isosceles happy trappy with sides of three. So we'll make this one three. The isosceles sides are 15. And the base down here is 21. It says explain why the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. Okay, so... Um, Let's do this. To get the diagonals, like, let me draw an SA. So here's one of the diagonals. Right there. Okay. We're going to use slope for this. Because if they're perpendicular, remember, perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal slopes. So let's take a look at what their slopes are. So if I draw a line coming straight down here and then going straight across, if I can figure out the, the rise and the run, then I'm good to go. Okay, so there's a little trick here first. Let me get rid of that diagonal for now, and I'll put it back in a minute. What I'm actually going to do is a trick that comes in really handy whenever you're solving isosceles trapezoid problems. Cut straight down with both. What I'm left with here is a 3. Okay. And since it's isosceles, these pieces on the sides are going to be the same. So if the whole thing's 21, and I take away 3, I'm left with 18. So this part's 9, and this part is 9. Since I came straight down, these are right angles. So now what I can do is do Pythag on this triangle right here. So I'll call this x, and then this would also be x. 
So if I did 9 squared plus x squared equals 15 squared, when you solve that out, let's see, 81 plus x squared equals 225. So x squared ends up being 144, which is nice because x is 12. So this is 12, and this is 12. So now, let me draw back in this diagonal here. Okay, well, if I just draw that by itself down here, here's S to A. I know that I drop 12 units, that's this part, and then I go across 3 plus 9 units, so 3 plus 9 is 12, so the slope of SA is going to be 12 over 12, but negative because it's going downhill, which is negative 1. So you could simplify that if you wanted. Okay, let's draw in MR. So I'll use this highlighter for it, I guess. So now we're looking at this one. All right, so if I draw that by itself, here's MR, or RM. Okay, so, sorry, I had to pause it for a second. Uh, we're drawing Rn, this diagonal, right here, and we need the slope triangle, so this, this part that comes down is 12. This part that comes across is this 9 plus that 3, which is also 12. So the rise over run, the slope of Mr, is going to be positive 12 over 12 because it's going uphill. And then if you look at our two slopes for the two diagonals, one's positive 12 over 12, one's negative 12 over 12. So since the slopes of the diagonals are negative reciprocals, the diagonals are perpendicular. Now, please, please realize that that's only true for this particular example. If I give you some random trapezoid and you draw in the diagonals, odds are these aren't going to be 90 degrees right there. And in fact, this one doesn't even look like they're, they're 90. Right. So it, it has to be very kind of coincidental for them to end up being 90 degrees. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the next problem. So ABCD has diagonals of length 20 and 12. Okay, so let's draw in some random quadrilateral. So here, let's do something like this. And it, there are no special properties to this one, really. It just says ABCD is a quadrilateral. And the diagonals are 12 and 20. So to me, this one looks like the longer one. So I'll call that 20. Okay, and then this one, I'll use a different color here, would be 12. Now, uh, this thing's not necessarily a parallelogram, so you can't assume that the 12 and the 20 cut each other in half. Okay. Uh, and then it says connect the midpoints. So here's a midpoint. I'm just kind of eyeballing where the midpoints are. If we connect them, there they are, right? Uh, and if you look at it, it kind of looks like the midpoints form a parallelogram. And it turns out we can prove it. So um, let's take a look at what we've got. Um, so I'll call these W, X, Y, and Z. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw just part of this diagram again. So let me redraw that A, B, C, D. And uh, I'll draw in the red diagonal going this way. So this one was 12. And then what we did was we connected this midpoint to that midpoint. Well, if you just look at this top triangle here, since this goes midpoint to midpoint, that line right there is a mid-segment. 
right? Mid segment of triangle ABC. And if you remember, that means that it's parallel to the 12 and it's half the size of 12. So WX here has to be half of 12, which is 6. And then the same deal happens down below, down here, when we connect this midpoint to this midpoint, right? Z to Y. ZY okay. is a mid-segment. So ZY ends up being half of 12, which is 6. Okay? So let me shrink this down a little bit. So now what we've got is this is 6 and this is 6. Now let me draw the same kind of thing again. So A, B, C, D. But now I'm going to draw in this one and this one. And remember, we've got this dotted line down the middle ends up being 20. So um, let's see here. Since this was a midpoint and this was a midpoint, if you look at this triangle, this line, uh, let's see, that's WZ, is a mid-segment of ABD. WZ is a mid-segment of uh, ABD. So WZ, whoops, I don't know why that didn't write. WZ is going to be half of 20, which is 10. And then the same deal occurs over here with, let's see, that's X and Y. And similarly, x, y will be 10. So now I know this is 10, this is 10. So over here, this part right here is 10. This part right here is 10. OK, so if I get rid of kind of the stuff in the middle there that's sort of in the way right now, well, then the perimeter is going to be 10 plus 6 plus 10 plus 6. So the perimeter is going to be 32. By the way, if you notice, that thing in the middle, this side and this side are the same, this side and this side are the same, so W, X, Y, Z turns out to be a parallelogram. Okay? Uh, let's take a look at number five. So the altitudes of an equilateral triangle all have length 16. Okay, so let me draw in one of these altitudes. And it's 16 units long. Now it's an equilateral triangle, so all of these big angles are the same. Now, um, I could call the sides x. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to call every side 2x. Oops. And the reason I'm doing that is because down here, the 2x gets cut with that altitude where this side and this side will each be x. So the whole thing is still 2x, but then the nice thing is I don't have to do a, like if I called the side x, then these would be half x's, and I don't want to work with fractions. So, okay, so this is what we got. So uh, I need to find the side length. Well, really I need to solve for x and we'll double it. So in order to solve for x, let's look at one of these triangles by themselves. All right. So I've got x squared plus 16 squared equals 2x, all squared. And I have to put the 2x in parentheses, so I'm using pi tag here. So uh, that's going to be x squared plus 256 equals 2x times 2x, which is really 4x squared. And then if I subtract x squared from both sides, I get 256 equals 3x squared. And then I can divide by 3. And then I can take the square root. Now, oh, whoops, x. Now, that's the same thing as root 256 over root 3. And root 256 turns out to just be 16. So it's 16 over root 3, and our units are in centimeters. Well, the question is, how long are the sides of the triangle? The sides are 2x. So 2x is going to be 2 times 16 over root 3, 
which is the same thing if you forget how to multiply fractions you can think of it like that 2 over 1 times 16 over root 3 and you just multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom and here is the length of one side of the triangle and if you wanted to plug that into a calculator and get a decimal for it that's fine it doesn't really matter to me okay i hope that helps a little bit and i'll